What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. I know I've been gone for a minute. This is probably the longest y'all haven't seen me in since my birth, since I was birthed by my mother. Uh, it was a really long weekend, Memorial Day weekend, Labor Day weekend. <clears throat> Thus, uh, I wanted to take some time to enjoy the weekend, go out, have some fun, uh, recharge before the season starts. And the season is about to start. It starts tomorrow night. And when week one kicks off, we're going to hear a lot of nonsense on Twitter and your in your group chat with your with your league mates you're just going to hear a lot of noise okay i would i would suggest getting a pair of of noise canceling headphones for week 1 probably even week 2 now i don't have time to edit this right now so i'm not going to pull up the 250 comments i got about how uh, elite david johnson was after like one carry in week 1 last year here's what happens I talk about a player that I don't like or like all summer. He has a terrible week one or a great week one, depending on the opposite of whatever I said. And then uh, and then all fucking hell breaks loose. Week one is a time not to overreact. Because this is a 17-game fantasy season, okay? One seventeenth. Literally, week one is 5% of your fantasy season. So today, we're going to talk about three players who I like very much that I think will disappoint you in week one. Thus, opening up the trade vault for you to slide right in there, okay? And hopefully you'll be a little bit more successful than me sliding into Zendaya's DM. <clears throat> you hear that? Someone say something? Three players that we're going to trade for after week one. Or, if you drafted them, we're holding, okay? Diamond hands on these motherfuckers, all right? Diamond hands. Week one, after it, three players, two, trade Four. Let's tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. And let's eat. All right. A couple housekeeping uh, house rules. House. I don't I forget what the phrase is. Whatever few announcements that I want to just get across to you guys. Uh, when the season starts, I talked about this on Twitter yesterday. Uh, if you're not following me, it's right there. I, I do this full time for those of y'all that are kind of new to the channel. I am a full time um, person who turns fucking camera on and puts videos on YouTube. So what I do for my work and thankfully you guys support me and uh, enable me to do so. However, one of the more difficult parts of what I do for me mentally is in season content. It, it I feel like it, it puts a clasp on my creativity because it's so time intensive, right? During the summer from, I mean, during spring and summer, anywhere from like April through the end of August up until last week, basically, I have the freedom to do whatever the fuck I want. I have the freedom to create what I want, do the types of topics and subjects that I want. And it's really easily, it's really easy on me mentally because I don't feel like I owe it to anyone. I don't feel like uh, I am you know, that I have to do any certain piece of content at any certain time. When the season starts, I feel like it, it absolutely zaps my creativity because there are just, it's like every single week, right? We have this five to six day period where we need to reevaluate like 200 players over and over and over again. And then it's just waiver wire, sit starts, rankings, week one, week two, week three, you know what I mean? Like all the way through it. So I'm kind of fighting with myself on, what kind of in-season content that I want to do. And I want to do shit that I enjoy, obviously, because otherwise I can't get through the grind of the in-season. It's extremely, extremely difficult. And, uh, you know, hats off to dudes like like Evan Silva and Mike Taglieri who just go through the season and, and grind. They just grind their brain into absolute dust by the end of the year uh, doing the amount of in-season stuff that they do. So for me, I'm trying to think of ways that I can, like, not burn myself out I realize I've been talking for a lot on this video. I'm sorry to all those to all those people that are new, but the timestamps are down below. Uh, without burning myself out, but still providing you guys value. So a lot of the content that I'm probably going to be doing during in season is going to be shorter form content. So these videos will probably be um, five to ten minutes. I plan on doing a lot of YouTube shorts. I plan on doing a lot of stuff on social, on Twitter, on TikTok. You can follow us on either of those at bdge two underscores. 
uh, just for my sanity, because it's really, really difficult to have turnaround time on videos like this while also putting out quality content. So a lot of it's going to be shorter form for me. If you want any more of the in-depth stuff, like if you want to be part of the community, if you want my weekly rankings, the only place you can get that at is bdge.store and you sign up for a big dog membership. Okay. It's the only place I'm going to be doing shit like that. I'm trying to enjoy the season a little bit. And speaking of, we have week one kicking off tomorrow night, and we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I think Tampa Bay is going to absolutely thrash him. However, I won't really be around to find out. I won't be watching the game live, which is pretty fucked up, I know. But it's fake intern Tony's birthday, all right? So he's a big baseball guy. We're taking him out to the Yankee game tomorrow night. Poorly timed. I didn't even realize it when I uh, bought the tickets for the game. But lo and behold, thank God for NFL Game Pass. I'll watch it Friday morning. You guys will be freaking out all Thursday night. So I'm sure I'll be getting 200 notifications about this guy or that guy not having a good time. But speaking of in-season content, too, like some of the things that I enjoy doing are vlogging. So I got a new little camera set up, so you guys will see a lot more vlogs from me. But I'm still trying to cipher through how I want to do the actual in-season content. We'll do some trade target videos. I'll do a live stream on Monday, Tuesday to uh, talk about some of the waiver wire targets. Um, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell down below if you want to be notified when I go live for those things. One of the things I'm going to do on Thursdays, I believe. I'm still trying to get the content because I'll have Fade the Public on Friday. We'll do the Q&A live stream with those of you that are uh, Big Dogs members, bdge.store on Saturday. On Thursday, what I think I'm going to do is live stream for you guys or video. I'm not sure if I'm going to videotape it or live stream it, but I'm actually going to go through every single one of my teams. I'm in two redraft leagues, I think four dynasty leagues, and I'm going to be setting my lineup. And I'm just going to be talking through what I'm thinking some of the sit starts that I'm faced with that I think will hopefully help a lot of you guys. And since I'm going through six different teams, I'll probably cover a lot of the players that are on your guys' rosters. And just the way that I think about approaching different sit starts based on the opponent that I'm facing, based on the lineup that I have, based on where I am in the standings, based on who's available on the waiver wire, things like that. So I think that will be a fun one. That one's easy for me to do even in long form because it's not like a lot of extra work. I'm kind of just hopping in and rattling off the different thoughts on my head. And as we're going through it, I'll be doing different research on different players. So that will also be valuable to y'all. All right. That's enough uh, nonsense spewed from my mouth hole. I know I'm going to get all the comments like seven minutes before he talked about fantasy football. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Shut, shut the, f sh shut your, f shut the front door. Close the front door. Shirt's already tucked in. Talking about tomorrow night, we have the Cowboys versus the Buccaneers. And the first player on this list is Ezekiel Elliott. Okay. They play the Bucs in week one, which means he's going to have a shitty week one. And I know this is going to end up looking bad. Anytime I try to predict a game before the Thursday night week one, it always turns out an absolute fucking travesty. It's a murder scene for me in the YouTube comments. But we're going with Zeke, all right? Here's the thing about Zeke. In a lot of leagues, Zeke started to fall a little bit into the back end of the first round, the early second round, which tells me there are enough people out there that believe Zeke is probably on the downslope of his career, which means those are the types of players you look for. You, you look for the types of players that fell a little bit in drafts, fell a little bit more than they should have in drafts, because that means the owner is already a little bit skeptical of a player like that. So we see Zeke sliding a little bit in drafts. And as soon as that owner gets a little bit of a glimpse of, of, of just a bad outlook for the rest of the year, that's when you pounce. Okay. Cause you look at the Buccaneers defense and the Buccaneers defense allowed the second fewest fantasy points two running backs last year in the entire NFL, the fewest rushing yards overall to NFL running backs last year, literally 60 rushing yards per game. They allowed that is, that is so few that is so you just, you just couldn't start running backs against them last year, 3.5 yards per carry, just league leaders, right? This game can get very, very ugly for Zeke. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw like a decent amount of Tony Pollard in week one as someone who's a little bit more dynamic, someone who can play out of the slot, things like that. And not to mention for the Cowboys, Zach Martin is going to be out because he landed on the COVID list for week one. Okay, so that's a little bit of a downgrade for the offensive line. More reason for him to struggle a little bit. Um, and then after week one, that's when the buy window is going to open up. And after they play the Bucks, basically, I mean, listen, your running back plays against the Buccaneers. It's going to feel like. The next week, you're swinging a fucking wiffle ball bat after you were in the uh, in the on deck circle with the weighted bat. Right? Like that's that's how easy these running back matches are going to feel like after you go against the Buccaneers and they have the Chargers, 
the Eagles, the Car- uh, the Panthers, and the Giants. All right, and you could make the case for you know. Chargers, great defense. Like, listen, they're not a fucking great defense. They have some good players who we've yet to see and put it all together. They're going to be a good defense, but they're not going to be like top five. It's not a running back that you don't have to fade running backs because they're playing against the Chargers. So it's the Chargers, the Eagles, the Panthers, the Giants. No one on that schedule slate. The next four games are someone to be scared about. So week one, after Zeke struggles against the Buccaneers tomorrow night, come back to this video and let me know how dumb I sounded. All right. So we have Zeke. And then we move over to more of a versatile player that plays on the outside. But before we talk about the versatility of this player, we're going to talk about the versatility of Truff Hot Sauce. Because we love Truff Hot Sauce. And listen, football season is football season. But football season is also food season. I know you fat motherfuckers are out there ordering DoorDash and Uber Eats two, three times on a damn given Sunday. And the best way to top off your food on a Sunday is with Truff Hot Sauce. Truff Hot Sauce is made with truffles. I am so stupid. This is literally the first time I realized why their name was Truff, and it's because all of their stuff is truffle infused. Man, I would never work with me if I was a sponsor. I am, I am, I am something else. Uh, Okay, but realistically, listen, this shit is truffle infused, and they have all these different types of hot sauce depending on how hot you want your food. They have hot sauce. They have literally hotter sauce, which I really respect that name. They have white truffle infused sauce. All of these is literally like luxury hot sauce. Not a big hot sauce guy, but this shit will make me put it on just about anything. You're ordering wings from somewhere, tell them not to put sauce on it. You already got your fucking own, all right? Put truff hot sauce on your wings, on your french fries, on your fucking headphones. Put them in your put them in your ear holes, and shit will sound spicy. You got spicy mayonnaise. You got pasta sauce. Like Literally, whatever you're eating, there is some type of sauce on truff that you can buy and put it onto your food. So go to truff.com, and when you use a promo code BDGE, you're going to get 20% off your order. Maybe free shipping. I actually forget. Another reason why sponsors should absolutely not work with me. I'm so focused in on, on my content that when I do these, I forget there's so many numbers and statistics running around. But this is one of those things where it's like it's like watching game film versus statistics and analytics you don't need a fucking promo code to buy truff because it's that damn good it's like when you watch saquon i don't need to tell you that the guy runs a 438 you just know he's a fucking beast that is truff hot sauce in promo code form i am part of big promo code right there's big pharma and then there's big promo code that's me promo code bdge truff hot sauce football season is here you need the absolute best sauce to be throwing on your food let's talk about marquez Callaway. Marquez Callaway of the Saints. Y'all know I've been high and high and high and high and high on this dude all summer. And uh, that preseason game did us no favors in uh, his ADP rising. And I grabbed him in the E-Town Get Down draft. Oh, and speaking of the drafts, a lot I'm getting a ton of questions. The New York City draft vlog that weekend will be coming out either tonight or tomorrow. Um, Noah, my homie Noah, who helps us out every year with that, you guys have seen him ripped. He put us through workouts and shit. He filmed like the majority of the party that night and he immediately left for vacation on Sunday. So he's been trying to edit while on vacation, which is why the turnaround time has been so long. We've already edited all the fantasy draft, all the Saturday shit. Noah or Tony and Ike both did their parts. We're waiting for Noah to finish up so he can put it into the middle of the vlog itself. Uh, the clips are fucking amazing. I can't wait for you guys to see this shit. We did the confession cam. So we have the, we, we do the confession cam in the middle of our fantasy drafts, right? Like if you guys are new to the channel, you might never have seen this, but we started that motherfucking wave. Uh, you put a confession cam in a room, just like the real world, where people would like go off, sneak off, and like talk shit. We did that in the middle of this party. This was like a 150 person party. Everybody's fucking wasted. Everybody's having a good time. We put a confession cam downstairs, and some of the clips are just outrageous. I cannot wait for this shit to go live. That's going to go live within the next 24 hours, hopefully. And then the Etown Get Down vlog, maybe Saturday. Uh, I kind of want to space them out a little bit so people don't like miss out on either of them. But the two vlogs I promise will be coming within the next like 72 to 96 hours. They are coming out. I know I just stay lying to you guys all the time, but I'm not lying about Marquez Callaway. Problem is he plays the Packers in week one. And because they have nobody else to throw the ball to, Jair Alexander is going to be all over this motherfucker. Like Truff is all over my chicken wings on a damn Sunday afternoon. So Jair Alexander is... I don't even think it's arguably the best man coverage cornerback in the NFL at this point. He's going to see a lot of them. I don't expect a big game out of him. My week one rankings are in the works right now, and I tentatively have Marquez Callaway at wide receiver 39 for week one. So he's a wide receiver four that I'm not super, super happy about. But 
once they're done with Jai Alexander, Marquez Callaway will be able to rack up targets. I think he's going to see somewhere between like 7 and 11 targets per game going forward, man. He's going to be the guy that Jameis Winston targets on basically, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if his target share was like 30% over the first half of the season, man. It's going to be really, really ridiculous. He's a big playmaker down the field. He's also not small, 6'2", 200 pounds. So, yes, he's going to struggle in week one. And because people picked him late, they're going to be like, oh, he's going to be the first guy I want to drop. Don't do that. Instead, or if someone drops him, we drop the fab, all right? They drop him, we drop the fab. They don't drop him, we try to trade for him, okay? Uh, listen, Michael Thomas and Adam Troutman are still going to be out indefinitely. So this is still Marquez Calloway's passing off on Traquan Smith stinks. It's him and Alvin Kamara. That is it. That is it. Latavius Murray just gets cut. Not really relevant to the conversation, but just throwing words out there for you guys. Marcus Callaway, number two player on this. Number three player, similar to Zeke, David Montgomery, Chicago Bears. Uh, They're playing the Rams in week one, the Bears. So I really, really believe he's going to struggle finding success on the ground in week one. The Rams last year allowed the fifth fewest running back points to fantasy running backs. Second few is rushing touchdowns overall. Uh, and not to mention, every week that goes by after week one is one week closer to Justin Fields stepping on the field. Okay. Uh, after the Rams, the Bears and David Montgomery get Cincinnati, Cleveland, Detroit, Vegas, and the Packers. That is a beautiful slate. Cleveland's pretty good. Whatever, whatever. The Green Bay Packers run defense stinks, or they stunk last year at least, but they won't be anything more than above average. So, after the Rams, they've got a beautiful slate. Uh, Tariq Cohen, again, started the season on the pup list, so he's going to be out at least six games, so we're not worried about him coming back. David Montgomery, the, I mean, at worst, he's a very high-volume play. We have beat reporters coming out of fucking left field. He's going to run for 1,400 yards, 1,500 yards, and about 14 of those yards are going to come in week one, which means all of them are going to come after that, and that's when you want to splash on him. So David Montgomery, another guy that he was kind of falling, right? He was falling into the third or fourth round of a lot of drafts, so that tells you that owners – to start are a little bit hesitant to um, feel confident about David Montgomery. And I don't think he's going to give them something to feel confident in after week one, tough, tough matchup, but it gets really easy after week one. And that's when he flourishes. Okay. That's what I got for y'all today. Sorry for all the nonsense up front, but if you didn't like it, fuck you. Nah, I'm kidding. I love you. Uh, subscribe to the channel. If you're new, Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Let me know what kind of content you want to see throughout the season. Please don't be like sit star ranking shit like that. I just I just can't do it. It's the same boring shit that everybody does. It doesn't fuel me. It doesn't fire me up. It doesn't make me passionate about this stuff. And I need things like that. So I'm trying to get my creativity flowing in my brain a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's what I got for y'all today. Make sure you go check out truff, truff.com. Use promo code BDGE for 20% off your order. Literally the best sauce that you could put on any food that you have. I might fuck around and throw it in my iced coffee. That's it, man. If you want my in-season rankings, the first iteration of them will drop every Thursday morning during the season. First one goes up tomorrow morning. BDGE.store. You will see a tab on the top that says community. You could sign up on the homepage. You could just scroll down and say, like, join the community. Or you can click on the community up top and you'll see the different tabs that you get access to. That's where my rankings are. If you purchase the season long guide, that does not give you access to in season weekly rankings. The season long guide was for your draft. Love you. Goodbye.